Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. This is Joe Pugh for IFL TV. We are here at Stratford. It's the start of fight week. Just had the first face-off. Alan the Savage Babbage, first of all, how are you and how's life? Thank you, brother. Life is beautiful. I'm back, you know. Rarely, rarely who comes back from a loss nowadays. But I did it I'm again, main event, headlining and... I just feel blessed, you know, and I know Savage is with me and everything is good. Going back to that loss last year, um, was it a struggle mentally for you to get back on the horse, um, get back in the gym and get on this road to redemption? You're in your second fight back now and you win this. There's massive opportunities. Yeah, it was it was crazy because I never thought it will be. You know, I always said I don't care about my victories, my zero, my everything. But when it hit me, it hits me really hard because I was a bullet train, you know, going 500 miles an hour, and I I just crashed like into a wall, into a concrete wall. You know, so it was a pretty hard crash and. And it was some challenging times, some very challenging times. My whole team, coaches and staff went away the first instant. So I was left alone, you know, and kind of roaming around. Team Dillian was here, was there for me. All, only, only Team Dillian was there, you know. And we started from scratch, literally. New city, new uh, coach, new game plan, new training regime knew everything so and and I'm very proud of myself for, for for going through that you know and I feel good now even better than ever so now I think it it needs to happen needed to happen times like that when as you put it you crashed did you find out who your real friends were who the real savage supporters were of course listen that that's like uh, you know that's true because I was left with my wife and literally two guys. So <laughs> there's not a lot of them to, to know, you know. So I was left literally three people in my life, four people. And those are the people I will help for the rest of my life, you know, because they were there when nobody was, literally. Like, I'm not uh, saying literally, but I can say maybe inside of the five people, let's say like that. So it was really, really hard. It was really eye-opening, eye-opening to see a lot of the supporters, the patterns on the back and stuff, it's so bullshit, <laughs> I tell you, it's so bullshit. Yeah. How much do you think you've improved since that loss has coming back against, obviously, Drago at the O2 earlier on this year and now moving on towards Johnny Fisher this Saturday night? Well, I'm I'm happy to show you. You know, I'm, I'm really happy to show everybody how much I improved because I have a whole different game plan, which is even more road than the, the one I had before. <laughs> there is nothing. It's not gonna be easy boxing, you know, checking game. No, I just go straight for the guts. You know, now even more. I have some more weapons I didn't have before, and the mentality is much better. My team believes in me even more than before. So. Everything checks out perfectly. Like that's why I say, I don't understand this fight is for Johnny, but it feels like it's for the Savage. I really feel like this fight is made for me. When this fight did get made, um, was it an instant yes? Did you have to kind of think about it with your team, or you just want to get straight back in there, don't you? No, I was like, I was already in camp. I, I said to my wife, I, I'm going. I don't have a fight yet, but something will happen. And Eddie Hearn actually messaged me on Instagram. He slid in my DMs <laughs> again. And I was like, yeah, what, what you need now? Oh, Fisher. Yes. And then I called him like 10 times after that. Is the fight made? Is the fight made? So I was the one who was pushing for the fight after it was announced, let's say like that. And he was like, yeah, yeah it's going to be good. It's going to be good. And then, yeah, it's... I was talking to everyone, just get me Johnny Fisher, you know, because now I'm the hunter. You know, I'm supposed to be hunted, but I started to be the hunter. I know you fought on the same cards as Johnny before, but before the fight was proposed to you by Eddie Earn, as he slipped into your DMs, as you put it, um, was he on your radar? Had you watched it? Had you followed his career? 
Well, never really, because I, I see him as a younger brother. He's younger than me, I think. How old is he? I think he's 25. 25. Listen, I was knocking heavyweights out 13 years ago, so he was 12. <laughs> he was 12 years old. So that's how I look at him, like an older brother, let's say. We never had animosity or anything like that. And so I was really surprised. And, but I said, bold move. If you did that half a year ago, it would be a great move. He would kill me and my name. I, am, I have no doubt about it. He's a good guy. But now, no, no way, no way. He should see I'm back. Savage is back. Savage is roaming free and it's going to be heavy. Heavy for him. Very heavy. Only a few hours ago now, you looked him into the eyes for the first time this week. Did you take anything from that face-off? Yeah, even the slightest concerns I had before this day, I don't have them anymore. I just saw that he is uh, what I think he is. He's a very young guy. You know? And I was young and I, was, I had a fight, so obviously, and uh, I know how hard it was. But I was fighting at the local amateur shows. He's fighting in the copper box and stuff, and I can't even... I can't imagine what kind of pressure is on him. And I have, like I said, zero pressure. That is the, the best the best uh, position you can put yourself in, you know. And he, I think he buried himself too much, too much, too much. It is in the copper box, as you say, and there's going to be a lot of Johnny Fisher fans, probably over 3,000 in there. It's going to be a bit of a hostile environment for you, but you're going to thrive on that, aren't you? Nah, bro, listen... Corona was hostile for me, they say. But I made my life in Corona, so it was beautiful for me. So it just likes chaos. And uh, the Poland, that was hostile. The world, I, I heard they were there, they were ready to jump jump on me and stuff. It was crazy. So I'm, I'm learning. At least I've been bouncer for 10 years straight. So I, I know something about hostile, you know, so it's not going to bother me a bit. And I know. There is a lot of Savage Army is going to be there. Uh, they message me every day. I'm going to be there. I'm going to watch you. Uh, good luck to both of you and stuff. So we have, we have uh, let's say, almost the same fan base. You know, He tries to be this guy who knocks everybody out. It's almost the same fa- fan base. And I think it's a great uh, fan-friendly fight. It's a great matchup. And it, it turns out it was a great fight after all. You know? Have you seen the content, the videos that Johnny Fisher, Johnny Dad does, the whole family do outside the ring? And uh, what do you make of it? I saw just a little bit of it, you know, but uh, I'm not for that. I'm really, it's not my cup of tea, I just say. I'm just, I don't know, eating that Chinese and what they do. They Not a fan of Chinese, no? And they say Bosch all the time. I still don't know what that means. So it would be awkward. <laughs> You'll have to ask him this week, Alan. Yeah, I, 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 I'm going to talk to him in the ring after I'm going to ask him. But uh, I really don't see the point of it. You know, it's just, it just not my cup of tea, let's say like that. Fair enough. Um, this week, as it gets closer to the fight, obviously we'll have the press conference on Thursday, Wayne Friday. Are we going to see the Savage there or are you saving it all for Saturday night? Well, I'm trying to save it for the Saturday, but he's here and he's going crazy in my head and it's crazy, crazy thoughts. <laughs> in my head, crazy. What are those thoughts? Oh, it's this fucked up thoughts. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. It's fucked up, but it's good because I know I'm not alone again. You know, it's, it's beautiful, beautiful feeling. I can't describe it. I just prepare my body like before, like the first early savage days, prepare my body, prepare everything and just let him do what he does best. You, know? um, you said at the start of the interview there's going to be a new and improved savage. Um, it's still going to be explosive. You're not going to move backwards. We know what we get with you and that's not going to change. Is it? It's going to be an exciting fight on Saturday night. Yeah, like I said, the savage was always fucked up in the mind, crazy, you know, and that's exactly what you're going to get, you know, you're gonna get crazy, if I, it's going to be crazy, I'm going to try to to drown Johnny Fisher, it's as simple as that, I'm going to try to do everything 
to make him as, as uncomfortable as it can possibly be. And I can do that. And you can't find a sparring partner who can do that better than I do. So that's my strength. And I'm planning on using my strength. You know, I'm not going to what jab with Fisher, although I have a better jab, but what am I going to jab with him? No, no I'm going to drown him. I'm going to drown him. I'm going to put him in a sink or swim situation. And I know he's going to sink. I know because I was there. I would sink if somebody like me came along and put it on me like that. And I saw him today at the face of, he was uh, had a really uh, bad breathing and stuff. He, he had trouble to breathe. Can you imagine being under 5,000 people and under bright lights, under the savage in the corner? It's going to be hell. It's going to be hell on earth. And I've been there. What doors, what fights could this open up for you should you get the win Saturday night? Oh, my team, I was just talking to my team. We are all happy. My team is delighted by this fight and they just keep on talking about all of these fights that are opening up and I just said I don't want to, I want to, don't want to know about them. I don't want to know about them. Just wait, wait, wait for Saturday, you know. Uh, we wait this long, so we, we wait at least a few more days, then I'll tell you my plans. Do you ever get fed up of people asking you about your weight? Because throughout the whole of your career, you said, I can fight cruiserweight, I can fight heavyweight. And then Bridgerweight come along and you said you're a freeweight fighter. You're always going to be the same kind of weight, but you don't care what weight you're fighting. I'm, I'm at that point in my career where I just don't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> I just don't because people are never going to stop saying all the same stuff. But what, what can I do? You know, Because I just let, let them have fun. If, if they have fun talking about me, about that, I'll let them you know, enjoy. I, I am here to make, uh, to be interesting, let's say, the personas or whatever. Like I said, I, I can be the smallest one, but you're going to see on the night when I deliver. I do want to ask you about Dillian White, the team. Obviously, you've got Magic here. They've stood by you um, through the hard times that you mentioned last year. And... Get this win Saturday, it's all going to come together, isn't it? Yeah, I thought at one point they were gone also because nobody called me and stuff after. And I thought, oh my God, even Dillian. And then, no, then they called me and said, what the, what the fuck is wrong with you? you know, you're our guy, you know. And then I came to London. It was like one year ago, exactly somewhere. And I came to London and they talked to me about these grand plans. And in my mind, I was defeated. I was done. I was out of boxing. And they were like, they brought me up. They gave me the strength, you know, they gave me the, the vision for the future. I said, no, don't worry, don't worry. Dillian, Dillian said to me, I lost a couple of times, you know, so don't worry. You will get back, you know. It just, it's just, it's brutal nowadays. Boxing is brutal, you know, especially with my country of Croatia, they, they loved me for four years and they, they turned their back on me like crazy. So they hated me for a year, so but everything is maxed out, you know, in, in boxing nowadays. So if you want to be a boxer, that is what I would advise you. Just be be hard, you know. Prepare yourself, thicken your skin. What did you make of Daniel Dubois beating Filip Hergovic? I know you always wanted that fight. Yeah, uh, well, uh, I couldn't say I was surprised because Hergovic was way overconfident, way overconfident. And Daniel Dubois, he's, uh, he's on his way to be the world champion. And he is already. And Daniel Dubois is on a very good tra- trajectory, I just say like that. He's on a very good path and young fighter, strong fighter, every- he has everything. He's been through a lot. See Daniel Dubois, good fights and the bad fights, and the good sparring and bad sparring, and he's really been through a lot. I I respect him gratefully. He's a young guy. He's like 26. Crazy. Can he beat Anthony Joshua? For, yeah, this is the first time somebody asked me that. Uh, I think about. Of course he can. Of course he can. But I think Joshua is. I think Joshua is the most dangerous heavyweight for the last five years. 
I really always thought that you know, he had his ups and downs, big ups, big downs. But I do, I do rate him really, really high because of the right hand and the strength and overall athleticism and everything. You know, so I don't know. I would give a slight edge to Joshua, slight edge. You know. Last one. Have you got a message for Johnny Fisher for Saturday night? Johnny boy, you made a mistake. I told you that today. I'm telling you again, you made a fucking mistake. One year ago. I would be the perfect catch. Not today, brother. You made a mistake. You're gonna pay for it. You make everything possible, made all of this possible for the savage. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. You made a mistake. Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And sportsbook.